That All is right, Rob. Uh, I, I, she probably saying yeah to what the Brooklyn Nets did today. Oh, I don't doubt that at all. I agree with you. That's a good call right there. Right. And they hired Jacques Vaughn, basically promoted him or removed the interim tag uh, from him as a head coach. He'll coach them for the rest of the season. Uh, Ime Udoka was the former Celtics coach, of course, lost his job, uh, was suspended for this entire season by the Celtics for a consensual sexual relationship with a subordinate. Uh, and uh, so the Nets thought about hiring him, Rob. The reports all over the place were that they were going to hire him and that they were close. And um, now there was were reports that, you know, they realized it wasn't uh, <clears throat> the best look. Uh, <laughs> they, the little bit of pushback uh, when that, that got out that they might hire him both inside and outside the organization. So, Rob, they went along and hired Jacques Vaughn. Your thoughts? Uh, spot on. For once, the Nets did something right. Chris, <laughs> when that original report came out, I thought that was crazy. I thought for that organization, given all the things that have happened to take on Udoka, I'm not saying he can never coach again, but it's too soon, too much. And they did the right thing. They really, really did. I know you want to go out and grab the hot coach, and he just went to the NBA Finals, and that would be a coup, and he used to work in Brooklyn. He's too hot to touch right now, considering what they have going. And I think, actually, it'll be better for Udoka Chris moving on yeah. if he's not thrown in the pressure cooker right away. Imagine if people are showing up in Brooklyn – at the Barclays Center with protesting and 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 uh, signs and shirts and like like no no you just don't need it and I think they did the right thing finally and cooler heads prevailed I was always shocked I know Woj and those guys were like oh it's a done, almost done or it's going to happen and it was reported right away but I think sometimes they step back and maybe it was the Kyrie Irving situation Chris that got in the way of this, you know, moving forward. And then somebody said, ah, you know what? I don't think this would make sense. Well, for that, that last point is a great one because, let's face it, they're still embroiled in a major controversy with Kyrie. And then you bring in Ime Udoka, which was another big controversy, and it, it just – and your fans, Rob, could have really made it tough. Now, I – was one who, basketball-wise, I think Udoka is just what they, they needed. He was a strong, defensive-minded coach. He seems like a strong personality. He seems like a guy who would not be afraid to check Kyrie or Kevin Durant. And obviously, the one year, he's only in one year, so it's hard to say he's great. You can't say he's great at this point, but he had a really good year in his one year coaching the Celtics. And so I, from a basketball standpoint, as somebody that picked the Nets to win the East, I was like, ooh, I kind of like that. But, and look, if fans would not have made a stink, if they would not have been there marching or, you know, protesting during games, if Udoka was hired, Maybe it could have boiled over and it would have been all right. But I do think right now the Nets' number one priority has to be getting back to being a basketball franchise, period. Like right now, they're a soap opera. They're a somewhat of a laughing stock. Well, um, I, I was they're gonna a say, mess. They actually played better the last three games. They won. It's a small sample size. No, I know. And good, I mean, they did. Where, they have looked from, better. From but where I'm they just were. Saying. From where they were. Right. Is what they I'm definitely saying. looked better. And even they lost to Dallas. The one game they lost in the three, they lost by two on the road. I mean, they played better. I've been watching them closer. Yeah, no. Nah, they, they, yeah, they, they de I mean, defensively, Rob, to your point, yeah. they went from being the worst defensive team in the league to the best. Now it's three games, but over those three games, they were the best defensive team. In no, the they played better. There's no so doubt. there is no doubt, and I'm sure that has something to do with why they felt comfortable going with Jacques Vaughn. Because even if they would have moved on from Udoka, they could have went out and tried to get somebody else. So I think that has something to do with it. And Rob, 
so look, we're both, it's fine. Jacques Vaughn, fine. Uh, you know, a decade ago, Rob, he was the new hotness, right? right? Everybody thought he was from San Antonio, had coached under Popovich. People thought he was going to be a great head coach. He went to Orlando and won 27% of his games over three years. Now, in fairness, he got there the year after Dwight Howard left. So, you know, it was a young team. No one was going to win big with that team. Um, we don't know if anybody could have done a better job, but he, he, he was dealt a tough hand there. So it's, you know, it's fine. I'm glad to see him get a shot. But the other thing, Rob, and you mentioned how well they're playing, they look better, and obviously defensively we mentioned the, the numbers, but offensively the ball's moving more, the spirit looks better. Uh, they just look more excited about playing. They they look well, better in every way. And, what and was, not only is Steve Nash gone, but for these last three games, Kyrie has not been there. Do you think that is a factor in their improvement? I just think they were better, Chris, than they had played. And I saw a better Kevin Durant. I just saw like – and Kyrie to me is a great player. So I don't think that if, if he's playing basketball, I don't think you're better without Kyrie. I don't because I think he's that good. But um, that doesn't mean that other guys can't jump in and do what they're capable of doing. And I'm trying to think when they came back, what was the second win, Chris? They beat Washington big. They blew them Charlotte, out. Which Charlotte. Is not they a, came they back. beat two pretty bad teams. So let's and they came, but they came back in that game big. Right. And I remember the excitement in Kevin Durant. I think he went and high-fived every play. Like, it, like they had just done something. Like Because they were down 12 to start the fourth, and they won on right. the road. It's a big comeback. Right. And I saw some excitement, like, like Kevin Durant was alive, and, and, and it mattered that they won. And you know what I mean? And they strung two, two wins together. So, you know, when Kyrie gets back, and, and who's back? Uh they just had. I mean, Seth it's Curry's mainly back. Kyrie. Seth's no, already Seth's back. back. Seth's he back. He came back, and so did um, Ben Simmons. They're, he's back now, right? Didn't he come back for? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's the still game looking, against Dallas. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Back. But they're but they're gonna have their full squad, and eventually Kyrie will get back, and we'll see. But they don't want to get buried. You don't want to be the Lakers. You don't want. I'm sorry, Rob G. You don't want to be two and nine or whatever it is. You you got to two and eight. Some water. We'll see what they do tonight. Nah, two um, and nine. Look, I, I'm I, just I predicting think, it. I think it does have something, at least something, to do with Kyrie. And I agree with you. I'm on the record. Kyrie Irving. I think I was one of the first to say best ball handler in NBA history. I know I was one of the first to say on a national level, first ballot Hall of Famer. You've heard me say, Rob, he hit one of the biggest two shots in the history of the NBA. Like, he is a phenomenal player. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But since he left LeBron James, before LeBron got there and after Kyrie left LeBron, he has not shown that his great individual talent when he's like the leader of the team or – and he's the leader of the Nets. I mean, he's the strongest personality. Um, he hasn't shown that he's going to translate that to winning. Um, Boston, they were better without him. They went deeper in the playoffs without him. And when he got back, they went out meekly in the second round. And he didn't play well in that series against Milwaukee. Brooklyn – the first season he was there, only played like 20 games, but they, I believe their record was better without him. Like, and right now, and this is not un, this is not necessarily unique to Kyrie. Pistol Pete Maravich, Rob, I was, when he made, and, and I, look, Pistol Pete Maravich is iconic. He's a legend. When I grew up, I mean, Pistol, it was like, come on, everybody loved Pistol Pete Maravich. But when he made the top 50 team all time in 1997, there, there were uh, ex-players that told me, huh, I wasn't sure about Pistol because if you look at it, Rob, he never won. He won with the Celtics um, when he went there as a role player, bit player, um, and didn't win a championship. Just, just you know, was on a pretty good team. 
Um, when he went to Atlanta, they got worse. Okay, they won 38 games the year before, or 30, 48 games the year before he got there, and 36 his first season there. When he went a few years later to New Orleans, they got worse. So there are times when a one, you know, a great individual player can not lead to winning because what well, what do I always say? Five man basketball when the ball is moving, everybody's getting involved, everybody's touching it. Beats one or two man basketball. Let me show you how much I can dribble, how well I can dribble, you know, and and I'm doing my thing one on one. And so what I if I'm the Nets, Rob I am not saying get rid of Kyrie Irving right now. What I am saying, though, is when he gets back, it might be two games from now, we'll see. But when he gets back, coaching, meaning Jacques Vaughn, if Kyrie ain't playing defense, take him out. Sit him on the bench. Meaning, because there was a report from our friend of the show, Brian Lewis, New York Post today, Rob, that said a scout said, he was watching the Nets, scouting the Nets against the Pacers on October 29th, I believe was the date. They lost that game, the Nets. He said Kyrie Irving ignored Steve Nash's play call 10 times. Steve Nash called a play. Kyrie saw him call it and did what he wanted to do. That was the report. So if he does that to Jacques Vaughn, come here, Kyrie. Get on the bench. Seth Curry, get in there. I mean, coach him. Because he ain't shown you that he's going to lead to winning, so coaching. And if he does, if he won't do the right thing, if the spirit of the team drops, if the losing returns, so on and so forth, then you can look to trading. And, Rob, I, I, obviously you might say, well, he's untradeable. Well, maybe a team, Rob, that just wants to get off some money might trade him, him in some contract or some contracts for a guy making $37 million and he maybe would never play for that team, but they might want him just for his contract so they can get some cap room for the future. So you look at that, but I I just think that Kyrie, we're talking basketball individually. Awesome. But you got to show me you can win because right now now it's a small sample size, but right now they look like they're playing better without it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's so hard because it's been disjointed and nothing has really worked since they've been there. And that year with Milwaukee when he got hurt, I think, in game three in Milwaukee, I really felt he was playing pretty well. They would have won that series had he not been hurt. I thought uh, they would. I mean, I don't know if they would have won I'm it without just, Harden. But, yeah, I mean, but, they've but had Kyrie moments. was playing. Yeah, they've had moments where we looked at him and thought. And you remember when he was playing with Harden? And there was no Durant. You remember he's playing? Harden both. was kind of, I don't know who was the leader on that, but Harden was but they handling the ball. Yeah. Harden was the yeah. point guard. You yeah. know, that, that's just the was, thing. Harden was running the They had a nice offense. run there at right. one point, and we were like, wow, Agreed. this is pretty amazing. So The dude is awesome. I still think he's a Hall of Fame. I, you know, I, he should be a first ballot Hall of Famer as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I, I think he's damaged himself. And, yeah, and it I'm, might. This I, I, might I, hurt him in that regard. You know, like not that he. But won't I'm get just in saying, Chris, basketball the, right, wise, right. Rob. But you know I that that's not how it's always done. And I think, I think, I, I think Dwight Howard hurt himself, like where no he doubt. is in his career. Chris. No like, doubt. People started thinking, and Rob. I mean, younger people right? might not even remember when Dwight was great. That's what I'm saying. A Dwight lot of Howard younger people think of him player. as a clown. Right. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but that's what they think of. So I, I hear you. 